Monday's third video for you is first news story is from Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital, where the first lady of Ethiopia, Zina Staciu, has been seen renovating the houses of the poor. I want to talk about uh, this uh, thing. Uh, what she is doing should be appreciated. But what is the Prime Minister doing? Uh, second new story is about Ethiopian journalist activists who appeared at a court today. What happened there? Police uh, again requested 14-day physical custody of uh, Damascan Dasalin, Miyaza Muhammad, Maskara Mabira, uh, Solomon Shome and uh, uh, other uh, journalists. What did the court decide? Third new story is from Tigray viewers, a Tigray, pro-Tigray, not pro-Ethiopian government, a pro-Tigray activist and I think he's a member of political party as well. He has shared uh, something from Tigray. He says it's a message for Tigray and diaspora that uh, Tigray ruling elite should be held accountable. What is his message? And lastly, viewers, Kimant uh, ethnic group members uh, have been under repression in the Amhara region. We know that fighting between Kimant ethnic group members and some Amhara groups uh, has been seen in the past, especially after the start of Tigray conflict. Uh, this uh, clash intensified and uh, uh, hundreds of uh, Kemet community members, they have crossed into neighboring uh, Sudan. Uh, an organization today shared uh, a clip from Sudan where the organization has built dozens, other hundreds of uh, shelters for Kemet community members who have fled Ethiopia, who are now in Sudan. We have a clip for you. Firstly, viewers, we have uh, some uh, pictures for you of Ethiopian First Lady Zinash uh, Taachio, uh, PM Abi's wife. You can see the pictures on your screen. The pictures are from Kolfe uh, Kiranyo Subcity, Addis Ababa. And Zinash can be seen renovating the houses of the poor. PM Abi has also been seen in the past renovating the house of the poor and uh, since 2018 we have seen him several times uh, do this act and he says that uh, those uh, who are uh, uh, those who have money they should help the poor and uh, before the start of rainy season uh, the houses of the poor should be repaired renovated. Uh, and Zinash uh, Tayachu says that she will innovate six houses uh, from her own pocket. PM Abi has also been saying that he spends on the renovation of the house of the poor from his own pocket. Now, it's a very commendable act what this uh, lady is doing, Zinash Tayachu. But I want to ask a question. While the first lady is renovating the houses of the poor in Isababa. Ababa, the Prime Minister is constructing a palace, an official residence, official office of the Prime Minister in Addis Ababa, Menelik Palace. What is the cost of construction of the palace? One billion US dollars. So I am unable to understand their actions. On the one hand, they are so... Uh, sympathetic towards the poor that they are spending uh, from their own pockets on the houses of the poor. On the other hand, they are using public money to and 1 billion US dollar public money to construct a new uh, palace in Addis Ababa. There is something wrong with the priorities viewers. Actions uh, and intentions uh, are not the same, it seems. Having said that, uh, what Zinash is doing, it should be commended, appreciated. Others should follow as well. 
Uh, second new story is about Ethiopian journalists, activists uh, arrested mostly in the Amharic region of Ethiopia. Uh, big names, uh, we get to know about them because uh, they have public uh, profile, otherwise uh, thousands are in detention. Now, some were taken to a court today. Tamaskin uh, Dasselin, editor of Fiti magazine, was at a court. Miaza Muhammad, Meskaram Abira, Natniel Yalim Zavid, Solomon Shome, and Ethio Forum uh, journalist as well. They were taken to a court uh, and again police requested 14 day physical custody of these uh, journalists mostly. And police said that these journalists were involved in inciting violence. The court has not uh, announced any decision today. Uh, on Tuesday, court will announce its decision. Their lawyers pleaded for bail. They wanted their clients to be released on bail. No decision from the court. So on Tuesday, we might see some decision. They could be released on bail or they could be again sent back uh, into police custody. Third news story is a very alarming one viewers. It's from Tegarai. It has been shared by uh, an activist, a political party member who is pro Tigray. He is not backed by Ethiopian government. His name is Fitsam Birhane. In the past, we have seen him share material from Tigray which was factual, which was not uh, false information. What is Fitsam Birhane saying? Fitsam Birhane says that uh, Tigray's largest hospital, either referral hospital in Makale, has stopped providing services on generators as well. Why? Because uh, the government says there is no fuel available for running generators. So, largest hospital in Tigray, it's not providing services to the people because there is no fuel for generators. But Fitsam Birhane says that villas houses of TPLF government officials are well lit with generators or electricity, whatever the source is, but uh, there is no load shedding at the houses of TPLF government officials. That is what Fitsam Birhane. Fitsam says that it's a message for Tigray and Diaspora. And an interesting observation from this person, Fitzam. Fitzam says that uh, government of Tigray fears Tigrayan diaspora more than common Tigrayans. So that is why it's a message for Tigrayan diaspora that they should put pressure upon ruling elite in Tigray. That uh, the ruling elite uh, should sacrifice for the people of Tigray. But here patients are dying. They are not being, being given services because there is no fuel for generators uh, at, at the hospital. On the other hand, their houses have electricity, lights, everything. Very valid question. Yes, the Grand Diaspora community must raise this question. It's a time for sacrifice. If it's a time for sacrifice, then the elite, the ruling class must be the first to sacrifice. Because they were the first to uh, reap the benefits of the government when they were in power and they are still in power. Lastly, the last new story is about Kiman people under repression in Amhara region for years. Uh, they are fleeing Amhara region, they are crossing into neighboring Sudan where shelters have been built for them. We have a clip for you shared by NRC which is an agency. Uh, it says that uh, more than 1,000 uh, Tukal uh, shelters have been built for these uh, Kimant community members who have fled fighting in Ethiopia. Hi, it's Will Carter. It's the 5th of June 2022. I'm in the Babkiri refugee camp in eastern Sudan, where mostly um, Kimant people from Ethiopia have um, uh, fled the fighting. And... Um, 
uh, whilst we built 1,200 of these Tukul um, shelters in Rukuba and Tenedba refugee sites, we're just starting here, hopefully ahead of the worst of the rainy season. And so the first 30 or 40 are being completed now and another 400 to go. Um, it'd be really important for people to have, uh, you know, dignified space, uh, safe roof over their heads um, uh, in, in the months to come.